The far south probably staying dry uh, with some brightness as we go into the afternoon. Can't rule out the odd isolated shower. Uh, the rain could be wintry on higher ground. The temperatures today up to about 11 Celsius, and you'll notice the strong northwesterly winds, which will take the edge off the temperatures. Through tonight, the good news is the rain and the showers will clear underneath the clear skies, and with the winds easing off, we'll see some ground frost forming. The temperatures down to about 1 Celsius. That will give us a chilly start to tomorrow morning. There'll be some sunshine to start the day, but before you know it, more cloud and rain will spill in from the west. That's your latest forecast. Benaz, thank you very much indeed. The time, seven minutes past seven. And the threat of a no-deal Brexit is forcing the Welsh Government to arrange extra storage space to stockpile medical supplies. The warehousing in South East Wales will be used to hold an additional six weeks of stock, including syringes, bandages and rubber gloves, in case there's a disruption to the supplies. BBC Wales understands the deal to secure extra storage will be finalised in the next few days. Well, Vanessa Young is the director of the NHS Confederation in Wales, and she's on the line now. Good morning to you. Morning, Colette. First of all, um, we understand that this is the case. Can you confirm that this extra storage space is indeed being arranged? Um, yes, it is. As, as you said, we are uh, looking to uh, stockpile um, six weeks' supply of clinical consumables, and that's things like um, syringes, rubber gloves, pads, incontinence pads, those sorts of products. Um, to ensure that if there is disruption at borders, that uh, we have the supplies that we need in Wales and that hospitals and uh, medical facilities in Wales can get access to these products. Are you also stockpiling drugs? Um, in terms of medicines, the UK government has taken the lead on managing um, the supply of medicines, and so they've worked with the pharmaceutical industry again to ensure that there's a six-week supply um, of medicines across the UK. Um, and so the Welsh Government um, has been working with the UK Government on, on that. And the key message for patients and for frontline practitioners is that there is no need to stockpile medicines because those arrangements have been put in place by government. It is, of course, you know, easy and, and right on your terms to say, don't stockpile, carry on as normal. But an awful lot of people here in Wales uh, take prescription medicines or need medical supplies. When they hear that stockpiles are being organised, they're going to do what we always do, which is panic, aren't they? Um, well, there really is no need to do that because... Um, those stockpiles will be in place in, in, in the UK um, and therefore people can continue to use their medications as prescribed. They don't need to stockpile at home because that, that um, uh, arrangement is in place um, at, a, at a UK government level. And the thing is, if people do start to, to take um, uh, action to stockpile themselves, then that could actually disrupt the arrangements that we are putting in place to ensure that there is enough supply for everyone. So the very clear advice is continue to use your medications as prescribed and just do what you normally do in terms of seeking repeat prescriptions. But there is absolutely no need to hold medications at home, extra medication. What proportion of supplies and drugs are, are coming to the NHS here in Wales from, from mainland Europe? Um, around um, three quarters of medicines come from Europe currently, and around half of our consumable products. That is a massive and so, amount of um, stock, you know, That's it? why it's really important that we are making these preparations in case there is a new, no deal, and in case in that situation there's disruption in terms of traffic flows at borders. Um, and so we've been working in the NHS with Welsh Government and um, UK Government over a number of months to put these preparations in place. And we're confident that the arrangements that we have made will ensure that those supplies can continue to flow. But I'm guessing that coming out of Europe with a deal would be better for, for the uninterrupted supplies to come into Wales. What kind of pressure and what kind of message have you been sending to the UK Government about the ideal situation? post March the 29th? Uh, we, we have consistently um, said both um, as the Confederation um, but also as, as part, a member of the Brexit Health Alliance, which is a UK um, alliance, we've consistently said 
that a no deal scenario is the is the worst case scenario in terms of the NHS and our key priority is to protect uh, patient safety and to ensure that services aren't disrupted and that's what we've been doing over a number of months in terms of putting these preparations in place. I wonder if, if I could ask you just quickly about staff. We know that the NHS is the biggest employer. We know that you employ an awful lot of people from the EU and from other countries outside the EU. Mm. What are the arrangements in terms of visa and work permits for those staff in the event of a no-deal Brexit? Well, in, in Wales at the moment, um, we have around uh, 1,500 EU nationals recorded on, on the staff um, database in the NHS as being EU nationals. But that, um, so that represents about 3% of the directly employed uh, workforce in the NHS, but that doesn't include uh, GPs or dentists, for example, or people who are working on agency or contract for us. Um, and within those numbers, about 70% are medical, in, sorry, not 77% are medical and dental. So there are um, particular um, uh, uh, um, specialties within the NHS where um, EU nationals represent a higher proportion of the workforce. But our key message to all EU nationals working in health and social care is that you are very uh, much valued and your contribution is very much needed in the, in the NH health and social care sector okay. and we really want you to stay. And yes, in order to do that, um, we would uh, are encouraging EU nationals working in health and care to apply for settled status, which they can do um, from the 30th of March. Vanessa, we'll um, have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. That's Vanessa Young from the NHS Confederation in Wales. Yeah, they're talking about the NHS as well. Uh, Beth Ann Clement, who's in for DOT today from 9 o'clock, broadcasting from Llanamunach, talking about uh, cross-border issues when it comes to the NHS. That's coming up.